Hi, this is PDF Bergsberg Arcade at BergsbergArcade.com, and this is tutorial 200 and I believe it's 46. They go by so quick. I received a couple of messages uh, about the Mob AI that we're going to be doing, and I was talking about some of the things that I wanted to redo. And I had a couple, well, instead of just answering them all one by one, uh, I typed up a little document here. Unfortunately, I do not have any flowchart software on this computer, at least not yet. I have reformatted, I just haven't got around to installing it. Uh, but anyway, I just wanted to go give a quick rundown on exactly how I want my AI to work, or at least uh, a quick outline of it. So, uh, well, with that said, let's just jump right in. Uh, so we're going to start off with the mob gets spawned, and it's going to be spawned under a spawn point. Every mob is going to be, well, have a parent of a spawn point. Now, the mob doesn't really interact with the spawn point. It just needs to know where its spawn point is so it can go back. Uh, outside of that, it really doesn't care about the spawn point at all. So when it spawns, it's going to have its state set to init uh, right away. And, well, it's just going to start up uh, the FF, uh, the finite state machine uh, in the start method. Maybe I should put that here. Uh, start finite state machine in start method or function, whatever you want to call it. Uh, anyway, so it'll go ahead, it'll run the init, init method. So it runs the init method, then it sets the state to setup. And you can go ahead and look at the code to see exactly what these states do. And after it's done this, the uh, setup state, I basically want to set its state to idle. Now, right now, we're not actually doing anything with idle. Uh, we're going to be playing around with it a bit because we're using a, a, a Boolean value called, um, uh, I believe we're calling it alive or maybe awake. I think it's alive. And basically what we're doing is uh, when the finite state machine is active, basically when someone runs into the on trigger enter, uh, we're waking the mob up and running through the finite state machine until it's time to turn it off. And as we demonstrated in the last video, uh, we're not actually turning the finite state machine off. So that is something we're going to have to address in this little series. Uh, but anyway, I'm going to take uh, use of the idle state now. And uh, when it's in the idle state, it basically that turns the finite state machine off. Uh, so that's what we'll do here. Uh, after it's done, everything sets up perfectly, then we'll just set it to idle. Uh, so once it's in idle, we just sit sit there until a player uh, or until our on trigger enter activates. And then when that does activate, we're going to check the flag of whatever it is that entered our on trigger enter event, the collider, and we'll see if that has the uh, tag of player. And if it does, that's just going to wake us up. Uh, so let me just here, I forget my little dash. Uh, so set the state to search uh, when they're within range. Now some of these states, um, I'm not really sure what I was thinking when I first put them down. Uh, I know originally I had it set up so that uh, when the player enters the collider, the mob may not actually detect the player because I'm going to have different uh, abilities with the player character. Uh, something like a stealth level. So you can actually potentially get closer to a mob, uh, maybe than your buddy can, before it detects you. Uh, that's what the search part is about. So like, even though you've entered the collider, uh, it still may not detect you right away. Uh, so I'm probably going to keep it the same. Maybe not search, but detect or something like that. I might change the name of that, uh, that particular state. But anyway, that's what that's about. Uh, well, it's right down here. Test to see if they can see the uh, if they can target a player or not. If it detects them, and uh, if it can detect them, then of course it just sets the the target flag or our target variable to the player, and then set the state to attack. Uh, I'm going to be changing this. It's not going to be attack anymore. It's going to be a decision state uh, where they have to decide what to do. So once they actually have something targeted, they just basically keep looping through this. And basically, they have to decide, you know, okay, I have something targeted. What do I want to do? Do I want to move towards it? Uh, do I want to use my ranged attack? Do I want to use a magic attack? Do I want to use a melee attack? And, of course, all these things have to be kind of figured out, right? Uh, for instance, uh, there's no point in trying to do a melee attack with her uh, not within range. And the way I'm making my game, melee attacks do a lot more damage, well, 50% more damage uh, than ranged attacks. So if you're within range of the person to do a melee attack, you'd obviously want to do a melee attack over well, the ranged attack. And likewise, magic attack doesn't do uh, as much as melee as well. Uh, but uh, anyway, it's going to, we'll have to put something in to kind of decide you know, how we're going to 
figure out what attack to do. Uh, but for now, we're just going to let me move this up. For now, we're just going to stick to just chasing them until uh, we get this all restructured. And basically, when the player has on trigger exit, or at least when that fires off on the mob, uh, right now we're just jumping through the portal because I haven't actually made the mob slow enough that we can run away yet. Uh, but when it um, fires, what I want to do is have it return to the spawn point, and when it gets to the spawn point, turn off with the finite state machine, and then just wait for another on trigger enter. So maybe you have some sort of idle animation for the for the mob where it's sitting there. I don't know, picking crud out of its toenails or something like that. And that's what will happen is it'll switch over to its idle state where it's, you know, picking crud out of its toenails until you uh, trigger the on trigger enter again. And of course, I forgot my capital here, but that's fine. They're just notes. Uh, but anyway, then in which case, you know, it'll wake up again. And while in our instance for the first wave, anyway, it's just going to chase us. Uh, but anyway, as you see, it's uh, already after 430 in the morning here. And I'm going to be heading to bed, so I'm going to hurry up and get this one encoded and uploaded. And it's just a quick little FYI, just in case you're wondering what we're going to be doing in the first wave of Mob AI. Thanks for watching. Bye-bye.